Hi there, and thank you for joining us at the first ever installation of the Twisted Bar Spoon channel. The channel where we help the home bartender grow and elevate their home bartending skills. Today we're gonna to be making two different cocktails. One, an all-time classic, the Old Fashioned, and the second will be the Paper Airplane, both containing bourbon, and they don't require too much skill or too many ingredients. Also, we're gonna be talking a little bit about where I get my bar tools. They are professional grade bar tools at very, very affordable pricing. And as a matter of fact, a lot of Canada's top bars actually get their bar tools from the same supplier. So stay tuned and we're gonna talk about that right now. Welcome back. And as you can see, we've moved on to the kitchen. This is essentially the home bartender's place to be when they're looking to make cocktail creations because this is where all the liquids are and where all the tools are. Now let's get started. So we're gonna start off with an old fashioned today. So a few things that you're gonna need ingredient wise for the old fashioned. You will need some bourbon, your choice of bourbon, anything goes, it's really up to personal preference. You're gonna need some Angostura bitters, also some sugar cubes. Um, we're also gonna need some orange because we will be using some orange peel as a garnish afterwards. Tool wise, honestly, use anything that you have at your disposal. But if you are looking to get some professional grade tools or just some you know, bar tools that you can use around the house anytime you wanna make a cocktail, for this cocktail we will need a muddler. We will need a bar spoon. We'll also need a strainer, hawthorn or julep. It's up to you. A mixing vessel or a mixing glass and a peeler to peel the citrus. All right, now let's get to it. So first things first, when making the old fashioned, you're gonna need either some simple syrup. I prefer to use sugar cube, a little bit more old school. I'm just gonna toss it right in there in my mixing glass. Then we're gonna add some Angostura bitters. So the Angostura bitters is gonna add a bit of spiciness, add some depth and dimension to the old fashioned. Now we're gonna add two, two to four dashes. It's really up to you how bitter and how spicy do you want. It doesn't actually add that much bitterness to it, but it does add some nice cinnamon notes and a little bit of clove notes as well. Angostura, world famous. You can get this pretty much at any grocery store. Uh, if you don't have any in stock, I recommend you do. It does last a very long time. All right, now that we've got our cube in here with the bitters, everything's gonna saturate together. And what we're essentially gonna be doing now is we're gonna be grabbing our muddler and we're gonna mush that into a nice paste. Get a nice uniform texture. Make sure everything is nice and blended together. I'm just gonna keep going a little bit more here. Get a nice consistency. One of the worst things that I find when I get an old fashioned in certain places is that in my actual glass, there's still some sugar granules and it's, uh, it's really annoying to kind of get that crispiness. I'm looking for a nice smooth liquid. So you can see at the bottom of the glass here, everything's kind of mixed together almost homogeneously. Now following that, we're gonna add our bourbon. So we're gonna go for a solid two ounces of bourbon. Just pour that in your jigger. If you don't have a jigger at home, remember that one tablespoon is equal to half an ounce. So before I add the ice here to chill and dilute this a little bit, what I like to do is I like to just grab my spoon and while everything's a little bit on the warmer side, just stir that together Try to break down that sugar. Try to get that sugar as integrated as possible into the bourbon. All right, now we're gonna add some ice. The more ice, the better, and you wanna make sure that your ice is nice and dry. If your ice is wet, I recommend you stir for a little bit less time uh, because it will add some extra dilution because you're gonna be having all that water on the outside of your ice cubes. But if it's nice and dry, don't worry, just keep stirring. Keep stirring, just keep stirring. So the old fashioned cocktail, quite the classic, been around for a long time, since the 1880s actually. So this is said to be a uh, <coughs> Louisville, Kentucky creation that eventually migrated to New York City and became famous there. So pre-prohibition cocktail here, still going strong to this day. When do you think you've got enough dilution here and enough chill? Dab a little bit on your hand, give it a taste. If it's still a little bit too hot, so too much alcohol still, give it a bit more of a stir. 
Um, but apart from that, you don't want to over dilute this. So that being said, we are done stirring. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab a rocks glass. And I just put a cube in here just for convenience sake. Get the big cube right in here. Grab your julep strainer or your hawthorn strainer, whatever you have handy. And then we're essentially just going to put that right over here just to catch the ice. We're going to tip that over slowly. I like to pour slowly so that any excess sugar might stick around in here. So if you can see there's a little bit of sugar that hasn't uh, melted into the liquid. I'm going to keep that right in here without mixing it into my drink. Now after that, we got to add the garnish. Classic orange zest. You can go for the maraschino cherry as well, but it's always a good idea to go with the orange zest. Make sure it's washed. Take the stickers off after as well. And then just take your peeler, get in there, give it a nice peel. So with a garnish, especially a garnish that's gonna go in the drink, you wanna make sure that you don't have too much of the pith. So this white part here, this is actually gonna add bitterness to your drink. If you're just garnishing on top of the drink on the rim and it's not gonna be incorporated into the liquid, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. But ideally, you're gonna to wanna to have that nice and uh, put like this. So now you're gonna grab your knife and we're just gonna clean this up a little bit, make this a little bit more presentable. So kind of just go over here, cut off these rough edges. We're gonna do the same here, kind of go into a point. Go now here, it doesn't need to be perfect, but it does clean up the garnish quite a bit. And then we're just gonna add a slit so that we can put this onto the drink here. So we're gonna grab this as well, as tight as you can, and we're gonna express the oils on top, just like so, just like so. Give it a little rub around the glass. That way all of these orange oils and aromas are gonna hit your nose and give you the sensation that you're having a little bit more of a fruity cocktail than you truly are. Then we're just gonna place the garnish like so. And that should hold very nicely. And here we have it. We've got the classic old fashioned cocktail ready to drink. Cheers. Now, before we move on to the next cocktail, another bourbon based cocktail called the Paper Plane, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the bar tools that I have here. So these aren't 100% necessities. You don't necessarily need these, especially for a home bar, but they do make your life a lot easier. Um, the most important thing obviously would be ingredients. So if you don't have liquor, if you don't have mix, if you don't have ice, if you don't have bitters, you can't really do much. But if you are looking to get yourself some nice tools for home at affordable prices, Check out Fifth and Vermouth. Fifth and Vermouth is an Alberta based company. They ship across Canada, they ship in the States as well. If you're interested, just check out their website. Lots of cool stuff on there. And while I set up for the next cocktail, the Paper Plane, I'm gonna leave you with this little message that I made for my friends at Fifth and Vermouth. See you guys in a sec. Welcome back guys and on this run we're going to be talking about an Australian born cocktail by a bartender named Sam Ross. He invented a cocktail called the Paper Plane. So this is essentially a variation of my favorite cocktail which is the last word. Just a few little substitutes but it's very easy to make. It's all equal parts. All essentially that you'll need are the ingredients and the tools to make this. Now for this recipe you're going to need bourbon of your choice. You're also going to need some Aperol some Amaro Nonino, and some fresh pressed lemon juice. So to start off here, we're gonna go with the Woodford Reserve Bourbon. You can pretty much use any whiskey that you'd like for this cocktail, but I do recommend sticking with the original recipe, which calls for a bourbon. So three quarters of an ounce, being 0 0.75 ounces. Then we're gonna go with the Aperol. Uh, the Aperol is going to add a little bit of orange notes, Oop. a little bit of orange notes, a bit of grapefruit notes, some bitterness, and a little bit of sweetness here as well. 
throw that in there. Now we're going to go with another bitter. This time the Amaro Nonino. The Amaro Nonino is an Italian Amaro. Uh, very, very nice. A little bit on the sweeter side. So you're not going to get as many botanical and bitterness that you would from others like, uh, let's say something like Campari or Chinar. So let's throw that in there. And then of course, we're going to need some freshly pressed lemon juice. So this is gonna essentially just add a bit of acidity, balance everything out. Now everything, every ingredient, everything in this cocktail is 0.75 ounces. So very, very simple to make. Now all you gotta do is add a little bit of ice. And by a little, I mean load that shaker up. More ice is always the better way to go. And then we're gonna shake this sucker up. Now, if ever you can, it's always good to chill your glass before you pour it in. Either have it in the freezer or in the fridge or even put some ice in there. But for simplicity's sake, and since I'm just making it for myself, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this at room temperature. Now that you got a good shake going and that your tins are nice and frosty on the outside, go ahead and separate these guys. And now it's time to strain and pour into your glass. Now for a shaking cocktail, you're gonna need a Hawthorne strainer. So Hawthorne strainer is anything with a spring going all around the side here. So I'm gonna use this one here. This is called a halo strainer. This actually doubles as a julep strainer as well. And when you're shaking, I always recommend that you double strain with a tea strainer, sorry, or a mesh strainer, if you will, just to catch any smaller particles that might add extra dilution to your cocktail. This is a beautiful cocktail. If you're not a huge fan of whiskey and you want to get into whiskey, I recommend doing this cocktail. Um, it's fantastic flavor. It's not super whiskey forward, uh, but it is very, very well balanced and you still taste that bourbon in there. So I highly recommend you give this a go. Now for this garnish, since we're using some lemon juice in there, we're also going to garnish with a lemon twist or a lemon peel, if you will. Very simple, just like the old fashioned. Grab your peeler, get into the skin. You wanna make sure you don't have too much of the white pith. This looks perfect to me right now. And we're just gonna give this a little shape. We went pointed last time. This time we're gonna go a little bit more classic. Kind of just some straight edges, just like that. Take your zest. Get that all over your glass. You essentially wanna get those oils. And then we're gonna give that a little slit so that we can land that right on our glass here. And here we are, we've got the last word cocktail, an Australian creation, not a classic like the old fashioned that we just made, but definitely going to be a classic in the future because it is dynamite, very good cocktail. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope to see you guys again. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the little bell. And if there's anything that you guys would like to see, if you have any questions about bartending at home or bartending in general, send me a message and I'll answer you as soon as possible. Till the next time, this is the Twisted Bar Spoon. We'll see you soon.